When the Germans first encountered the T-34 tank in 1941, German General von Kleist called it, the finest tank in the world. So what made the T-34 the best tank of the World War II? In late 1930s, Soviet Army was equipped with the T-26 infantry tank and the BT series of fast tanks. The T-26 and BT tanks used petrol engines, which were too easily destroyed by light anti-tank weapons and even improvised weapons like Molotov cocktails. In 1937, the Soviet Army assigned engineer Mikhail Koshkin to design a new 26-ton medium tank. Koshkin came up with the T-34 tank. He chose the name after the year 1934, when he began to formulate his ideas about the new tank. The first production of T-34s were completed in September 1940. The first T-34 model had a length of 6.68 meters, a width of 3 meters, and a height of 2.45 meters. Its weight was about 26 tons. Powering the T-34 was the 500-horsepower model V-234 diesel engine, giving an impressive top speed of 53 km per hour. The T-34 had wider tracks, which exerted no more ground pressure than a human footprint. This allowed the T-34 to traverse deep mud and snow where German panzers bogged down. The main gun was the L-1176.2 mm cannon. In addition to the main armament, the T-34 also packed two machine guns, one in the hull and one coaxial with the big gun, for tackling infantry at shorter range. Its frontal armor was 40 to 45 mm thick for the hull, and 60 mm for the turret, and the side armor ranged from 40 to 53 mm. The most striking aspect of the T-34's appearance was its angled surfaces. Rather than being a basic metal box like earlier tanks, the T-34 was carefully designed to present sloping armor faces to incoming shells. Striking at an angle had two effects, it increased the thickness of armor that a shell had to penetrate, and the oblique angle meant a shell was likely to glance off rather than going through. For example, when a 45 mm armor is angled at 60 degrees, meant the effective armor a shell had to penetrate will be 90 mm. In June 1941 Germany launched Operation Barbarossa against Soviet Union. The Germans got surprised when they encountered the T-34 tank. A German officer stated that, one determined 37mm gun crew reported firing 23 times against a single T-34 tank, only managing to jam the tank's turret ring. Initially, the Germans had great difficulty destroying T-34s in combat, as standard German anti-tank weaponry proved ineffective against its heavy sloped armor. But one gun managed to penetrate the T-34's armor, the 88mm anti-aircraft gun. The Soviet tactics were poor at those days, they had inexperienced crew with few hours of training, lack of spare parts and logistics. The T-34 also lacked in the built quality as it was built by inexperienced workforce with very low expertise. Only company commanders' tanks could be fitted with radios, due to their expense and short supply, the rest of the tank crews in each company signaled with flags. The two-man turret crew arrangement required the commander to command aim and fire the gun all by himself. This made T-34 very slow in engaging the targets. The two-man turret was cramped and inefficient, and was inferior to the three-man turret crews of German Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks. Considering these problems, the T-34 was upgraded with 76.2mm F-34 gun. This gun was capable to punch through 2 inches of steel armor at 1,000 yards. It was also equipped with 9RS radio set. A new hexagonal turret was designed which provided more space for the crew. The turret armor was increased from 52 to 72 mm, along with this the ammunition capacity was also increased. The rectangular fuel tanks were replaced by the cylindrical ones, subsequently increasing the fuel capacity. As the war progressed Germans introduced new tanks, like the Tiger with ever heavier protection which was immune to the 76mm gun of the T-34. Due to low anti-tank performance, the T-34 was upgraded to the T-34-85 model. This model, with its 85mm ZISS-53 gun, provided greatly increased firepower compared to the previous T-34's 76.2mm gun. 
It had a larger three-man turret, with radio and observation cupola in the roof which was previously in the hull. Now the tank commander needed only to command, leaving the operation of the gun to the gunner and the loader. The turret was bigger and less sloped than the original T-34 turret, making it a bigger target but with thicker 90mm armor, making it more resistant to enemy fire. The Soviets were not ready for a surprise attack from Germany, because of which they had to relocate their production factories to different locations several times. The Soviet High Command was focused on one cost-effective design, cutting costs and simplifying production wherever possible while only allowing relatively minor improvements. This helped in reducing the unit production cost of the T-34 from 269,500 rubles in 1941, to 193,000, and then to 135,000 while its top speed remained about the same, and its main gun's armor penetration and turret frontal armor thickness both nearly doubled. Despite of the problems due to the German invasion, the Soviets ultimately built over 80,000 T-34s of all variants, it was the most produced tank of the war, as well as the second most produced tank of all time. With 44,900 lost during the war, it also suffered the most tank losses ever. But in the end, the T-34 was the tank that changed the direction of the war. 80 years after the first T-34 came off the production line, modern tanks including the latest M1 Abrams have followed the T-34's formula of speed, sloping armor, and a powerful cannon.